it's important to remember that whenever we talk about the velocity of some object or the acceleration of some object or the position, uh, we are defining that in terms of one particular frame of reference. And we can change what frame of reference we're, we're thinking about. So uh, we, we look at this in terms of something we call relative velocity. What's the velocity of this object relative to this other one? Which just means we're taking on a frame of reference where the other one is uh, treated as though we're at rest. So we might see over here, if we're on this cart riding with this, uh, this little stick figure who's throwing a ball straight upward, we would say, yeah, ball's being thrown upward. But if we're on the ground and maybe the cart is moving over to the right here, um, then when we see that ball thrown and he's just trying to throw it straight upward, we see it actually move over to the right. We see it uh, act like a, a projectile following a parabolic path. Uh, so the, the velocity of that, uh, that projectile, that, that little ball there, depends on our frame of reference. So with relative velocity, we're going to change from one frame of reference to another. We'll find that this is uh, very closely tied to what we did with vector addition. This will actually be vector subtraction, which isn't very different from vector addition, just like uh, uh, scalar addition and scalar subtraction are, are very closely related. So let's consider an example where we have two cars going in the same direction but with different speeds. Uh, this one is it's fairly straightforward to determine relative velocity and will help us to figure out more of a general form for uh, a calculation that we'll do to, to get there. Uh, if we think about uh, the velocity of, say, car A relative to car B, that means we're, we're imagining that car B is our object at rest. Our frame of reference moves along with car B. Uh, it might be useful here to think about yourself riding in car B and think about, from that perspective, what would car A look like? Well, if I were riding in car B, I would see that car A is coming up behind me uh, and catching up at a rate of 10 meters per second. And if I'm thinking of myself as still, then it looks like car A is moving to the right at 10 meters per second. So then we could say that the velocity of car A relative to car B would be 10 meters per second to the right. Now if we switch our perspective and look at uh, car A as our frame of reference and think about how is car B moving, uh, if I'm in car A, I see that I'm getting closer to car B, but now I'm thinking of myself as being still. So car A is treated as, as still, or our frame of reference moves with car A. Uh, so in that frame of reference, if the two are getting closer, it must be because car B is moving toward car A, again at a rate of 10 meters per second. So I would describe the velocity of car B as 10 meters per second to the left relative to car A. And so in thinking through this, we might uh, uh, very quickly get the idea that, yeah, we are just doing a subtraction between these two velocities. Now the direction we can add to think through on this, but it turns out if we use plus and minus signs um, to describe right and left here, uh, we actually have a consistent relationship between these. So it turns out that, um, that if I want the velocity of A relative to B, I'm going to do the velocity of A minus the velocity of b. And those two velocities are going to be measured relative to the ground. If I want the velocity of b relative to a, I'll do the velocity of b minus the velocity of a. So I end up with a negative 10 meters per second there, or a 10 meters per second to the left, if we're saying um, you know, right is positive and left is negative. Now what if the two cars are moving toward one another? Uh, so let's think about uh, A being our frame of reference, the velocity of B relative to A. Well, I see that in every second that goes by, car A moves 30 meters to the right, car B moves 20 meters to the left, so the space between them is decreasing by 50 meters every second. So the relative velocity, the relative speed anyway, is 50 meters per second between those two. If I treat car A as my reference point, or uh, you know, say my reference frame is moving with car A, then it seems as though car B is moving to the left at 50 meters per second. And then once again, conversely, if I look at the velocity of A relative to car B, uh, we said that gap is closing at a rate of 50 meters per second, so that's our speed still. Uh, but this time I think of B as being at rest, 
A is over on the left side, but getting closer, so it must be moving to the right in this frame of reference in order to get closer to B. So our velocity of A relative to B will be 50 meters per second to the right. Now again, it might be useful on this to think about the, the directions defined as positive and negative. So let's call this one a positive 30 meters per second and this one a negative 20 meters per second. So velocity b to a, I'm going to do velocity b minus velocity a. So that's negative 20 minus 30 meters per second. It gives me negative 50 meters per second, or 50 meters per second to the left. If I do velocity a relative to b, that'll be the velocity of a minus the velocity of b. So that's positive 30 meters per second minus a negative 20 meters per second. So that gives me positive 50 meters per second, or 50 meters per second to the right. We can express this as a vector equation, a uh, vector subtraction. Uh, those two velocities that we were given in both those cases before, uh, we, we treated those as, uh, uh, as velocities relative to the ground. So we did have some common reference frame on both of those measurements. And that's important here. It doesn't have to be the ground, but we do have to have some measurement in common before we do the subtraction. So in general, we can just have three objects Two of them, we're looking for the, the relative velocity between. And the third one is our common reference frame for two of those measurements. Here, the common reference frame was the ground. And so one of the operations we did here was finding the velocity of A relative to B. We did that by doing the velocity of A relative to the ground minus the velocity of B relative to the ground. Now, one thing that, that we ought to point out here is that subtraction uh, doing a subtraction of these two vectors is the same as adding the negative of the second vector or adding the opposite of the second vector. So I could write this out just as well as the velocity of A relative to B is equal to the velocity of A relative to the ground and then plus a negative velocity of B relative to the ground. Now, when I take that negative of a vector, the only thing that does is it flips the direction around by 90, or sorry, by 180 degrees. So if my direction on velocity of B relative to the ground was to the right, it becomes to the left. It, if it was north, it becomes south. If it was up, it becomes down. Uh, and then we have a vector addition problem. And we've done plenty of those, so we shouldn't have any, any trouble there. Uh, this, this is a useful way to think through this when we have velocities in two dimensions. So let's try one like that now. So now we have car A moving to the north and car B moving to the east, we'll say. Uh, so northeast, southwest will be our directions on this. If I want the velocity of B relative to A, I'm going to do the velocity of B relative to the ground. And then plus a negative velocity of A relative to the ground. And so when I fill in uh, numbers and directions here, we'll do velocity of B relative to A is going to equal uh, velocity B relative to the ground was 20 meters per second. We'll say that's east and then plus vector A, velocity A was 30 meters per second to the north, but we're looking at the negative of that. So this will be 30 meters per second to the south then. Now if we think through the, the direction on this, uh, the car B relative to car A, car B is going to end up over here somewhere and car A will end up over here somewhere. So they were right next to each other, but when the driver in car A looks over, he has to look over to the right and south to find car B. So we expect, sorry, over to the east and over to the south to find car B. So it makes sense that our velocity for B is going to be south and east. Now we just have a vector addition problem. We have 20 meters per second to the east and 30 meters per second to the south. So we can complete that like we would with any vector addition problem. So we'll start by drawing our vectors here. So we've got 20 meters per second 
to the east and 30 meters per second to the south. And then the hypotenuse is going to be our velocity of B relative to A. And we'll want theta there. And so we'll find the velocity of B relative to A is equal to, and for magnitude, we'll do the Pythagorean theorem. So 20 squared plus 30 squared, this is our right angle here, 20 squared plus 30 squared equals that velocity squared. And when we do that calculation, we get about 36 meters per second. And then we need to get the angle. So I have at and then some direction here. For that angle, we'll do the inverse tangent of the 30 over the 20. And that one comes out at 56, whoops, at 56 degrees. And then that is going to be uh, measured from east and rotating toward the south. So that'd be south of east. So uh, these, these are vector subtraction problems. Remember, just treat it as a vector addition problem where the second vector has its direction flipped around by 180 degrees. Uh, if you have a, a problem involving acceleration or displacement and looking at relative acceleration or relative displacement, it works exactly the same way as the velocity stuff does. The only thing that'll change is you'll have an A instead of a V, or a, a X instead of a V, or a Y instead of a V. Uh, so the variables change, the method does not, though.